What up everyone, it's your boy Satemang Ali, the Reverend of the Revolution, welcoming you to another edition of Your Daily Revolution, the podcast that helps you to wake up, turn your brain on and prosper every single day in every part of your life. Today's topic, it's just a story. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I was in one of my mastermind calls, and I love coaching. I I have a passion for coaching. I have a skill set for coaching. I have a gift. And, well, I put a lot of hours and hours into practicing and becoming a top-notch coach and mentor. So I'm on one of my calls, and one of my gals, she's talking about soccer. And I love, like, this lady's powerful. Sometimes she doesn't quite see herself as that, but that's okay because that's how all humans are. And this is why, like, the ability to help someone see what they cannot see is one of the greatest gifts that we possess as human beings. So on the mastermind call, she's talking about playing in her soccer game. <clears throat> and she's like, well, I just, you know, I got to have grace and love. And I'm like, well, what do you mean by that? And she's like, well, you know, I, I like get really mad at my team. And, you know, they don't get back or they don't hustle or they're in the way. And I just get really mad. But then I feel like, well, I shouldn't judge them. And, you know, I fall short. So I should have love and grace for them. And at this point, I felt the need to step in and help her to see something. See, this one's powerful woman. Right. She's an attorney a lot. She she is legit. And I see so much in her, and it's going to continue to come out. So I said, L- listen, ma'am. I-, I didn't call her ma'am, but I'm not going to say her name on the podcast. But I said, L- listen here, sweetheart. What if, what if showing love and grace was you really having the courage to confront these people? She's like, huh? I mean, we're on virtual camera, so she can see me. I can see her. I'm like, yeah. See, right now, you're so used to, oh, I don't want to step on anyone's feet, and I want to show them love and grace. And I said, sweetheart, consider what if love and grace meant showing them what they can't see. And I asked, well, what's the objective? Do you guys want to win? She's like, well, of course. Do they want to win? Of course. Well, maybe, just maybe, you need to stop playing small and have the courage to show them what they can't see. And she says, well, coach. You know, I can do that to guys, but girls, they can't handle it. At which point I said, it's just a story. That women can't handle the truth is a story. And that's kind of how it is in everything that we do. Like, it's all just mostly stories. When people get cancer and they're like, F cancer. I'm like, why would you say that? Like, there's a gift inside of cancer. Sure, there's a lot of suffering. One of my good friends, like him and his wife, his wife is going through cancer. And now she's beautiful, sweet. Like, I love this lady. This kindest woman. Known her for 20 plus years. Shaved head. Posted on Facebook. Imagine the growth that comes out of cancer. If you change the story about it. Because it's just the story. So I told my, my gal in my group here. I said, hey, sweetheart, listen to me. What if you just simply needed to step up to the plate and kind of go to war and drop the story that women can't handle it. And maybe, just maybe, they actually want to be called out. Maybe, just maybe, they love to be pushed. Do you like to be pushed? She's like, well, of course. Well, yeah, maybe you can exert your your experience and wisdom on the soccer field and not be afraid and stop suppressing based upon a story. See, we suppress and we, we behave and we take actions or lack of actions based upon stories. Stories that are disempowering stories that do not help us to move forward. Another one of my clients said, you know, man, Tim, I got like business coming up and I'm traveling and then I got graduations and I got parties and I'm like, all right, well, I get it. Totally get it. I totally get it. But consider this. There's always going to be some part. We got Memorial Day, then we got July 4th, then school starts, and then we got weddings in the summer, then we got summer vacations, and then it's Labor Day, and then it's Halloween, and then it's Thanksgiving, and then it's Christmas, and then it's New Year's, and then it's Martin Luther King Civil Rights Day, then it's President's Day and Valentine's Day. Like, did nonstop. So what would happen if we just acknowledge that it's just a story? And if the story is not serving us, let's find a way to course correct the story. I have all kinds of stories that I've run for so long. Brown people ain't supposed to make money. Polynesians were not meant to be wealthy. 
only white people can live in wealthy, affluent neighborhoods. And, and why do I run these stories? Because that's kind of how it is. And yet I choose to tell a different story. The story is, I want what I want. There's a why behind it. If God gives me choice, I get to run. And if God allows me to choose, I'm going to choose the biggest, the baddest, the coolest thing that I like. Brothers and sisters, what stories are not serving you today? To hear my client say, well, and she was adamant about this. But men can handle it, but women can't. A story. I'm not going to be able to hold on to my, my good eating because... I got vacations and I love my habits. That, that, those are stories too, because we believe our stories to be truth. We say that they are truth. Just like people used to say, the world is flat. Come on, man. Divorce is bad. Dude, divorce can rock people's world. And yet inside of divorce, there's a gift. Cancer is bad. I've not had cancer and I'm grateful. But people close to me have. And if we change the way we view it and really doesn't mean we're not going to feel pain, doesn't mean that we don't like it and that we can't be honest about it, simply means that we simply get to acknowledge that it's just a story. So how can we take on the stories? How do we acknowledge that it's just a story and change it? Well, number one, just keep telling the truth. Start to be real. I love that my client was so adamant that women can't handle it. And then like, as she's being honest, number two, inquire. Byron Katie, author of Loving What Is, an author of many books, powerful mentor, powerful coach, highly recommend her work. She says, if one gets into inquiry and simply begins to ask, one can discover things that they've never before seen or heard if they're willing to get into inquiry and ask. Ask and you shall receive. So number one, be honest and real. Number two, inquire. One of the greatest questions to ask is, is this true? Just ask it. Is this true? Is this true? Keep asking. Is this true? And what you'll find is you can go layers upon layers deep and most of what we think to be true, capital T truth, is not true. It's just a perspective, an opinion. So take a look at your body. What stories could you say, is this true? I'm big boned. I could never do CrossFit. I could never work out. I don't want to be like muscular like that. Really? Be honest about what you want and start to ask, is it true? With spirituality, just question. Be willing to question. This Earlier this year in my life and my religion and my spiritual beliefs, I questioned. Like radical questioning. I'm a hardcore Mormon, but I'm a little bit of a different Mormon. Yet I believe in God and Jesus. I go to church. I fast and pray and go to my temple. I pay a, a tithe and an offering. I have a calling that I serve inside of my church. And yet I can question and I can ask, hey, is this true? And just because someone from a pulpit says it doesn't mean that it's true. Just because it's inside of a magazine or a book or a movie doesn't mean that it's true. You got to find out for yourself if it's true. With your relationships, have you ever stepped back and say, is this as good as it gets? Is this true that we, we've got to suffer or could you actually have something different, something better, something more in line with prosperity? And finally with business, one of my favorites, can you question your belief systems? Can you question what you believe about money, about wealth, about possibility? I'm living comfortably right now and yet there's a piece of me that says, man, maybe I need to take it up another level, another notch. And it kind of scares me. I'm like, whoo. Am I ready to handle that? And someone said, hey, well, do you want to grow a billion-dollar company? My answer was no. And that's the truth right now. I, I don't really care to have a billion-dollar company today. And then the thought began to marinate and sit in my thoughts. I'm like, hmm, hmm, what would that look like? So I start to question, well, would I want that? Would that serve me? And it allows me to go deeper and deeper into question and query and asking Brothers and sisters, it's just a story. And anytime you start to feel frustration and anger, depression, drifts, guilt, shame, ask yourself, what's the story that I'm running that's causing this guilt, frustration, sadness, shame? And then just say, is it true? Is that story true? Brothers and sisters, I know if you want prosperity, you simply got to ask for it. And then you got to choose it. 
and you got to be humble and willing to ask for help and then challenge the questions and the stories that you deem to be true. This is your boy, Sitemagali, reminding you, if you want to create a life of real radical results, a life that you love, it will require you to get into a relentless pursuit with a ruthless commitment. So I'll pay you the piper every single day so that you can get to the top of your mountains where your prize, promise lines, and possibilities are waiting, just waiting for you. The revolution has begun. I'm out. For more info on joining the revolution and living your greatest life of prosperity today, go to www.yourdailyrevolution.com and join us in waking up, turning your brain on, and prospering today.